Hey everyone, it's Leanna from Love Learning with Leanna. Today I'm going to be bringing you five tips on how to get started with all this digital distance learning. Um, it's new for everybody and it's so incredibly daunting for a lot. It's overwhelming for many. Um, and so what I'd like to do is give you some first steps on how to get started. Okay, the, for the very first step, I'd like you to be able to get your feet and your students' feet wet. Uh, start with some assignments on Google Classroom that are very easy and not really curriculum based, but things such as physical activity logs, reading logs, um, things such as check-ins on a daily basis, or even uploading material such as videos and having students watch the videos and then respond with comments on what three things they learned about those videos. It's really important for the students and yourself to be able to play around and explore in Google Classroom because it's completely new and it's a completely different platform to what you and your students have been used to on a daily basis. Um, this back and forth that happens on Google Classroom is very unique. I did create tutorials on how to do those things and I'll link those down below in the comment section. So start with those and I hope it makes it a little bit easy for you to get this class up and running. Okay, number two. So as the students are getting their feet wet and exploring the check-ins and doing these little assignments here and there, I'd like you to really look at your curriculum and your standards and see what's most important. What is priority? What do you want your students to be able to uh, learn right away and things that you don't want to miss out on? Uh, if you've been teaching for quite some time, you know that the standards that the students will need, and I know every standard is important, but there are certain standards that you know that, that cannot be skipped out on. Start with those and see if you can progressively create uh, lessons or some type of uh, instruction that you can record and upload to your Google Classroom. Once you start small, you can kind of see what your capacity is. And when once you start with these types of resources, um, or creating these types of lessons, you become faster at it um, and you mainstream a lot of these activities. So it'll buy you some time on how to kind of get a more round um, curriculum on your Google Classroom. The third tip I have for you is to be able to stay organized. Um, look over my first Google Classroom video on how to organize topics such as uh, ELA, math. If you're into organizing by the week, then go ahead and do that. Start organizing topics. That way, you're, when you start the classroom, your students are not confused as to where to look or where things are. Um, if it looks presentable and if it's organized in a fashion where it is pleasing to the eye, the students will be much more willing to turn in those assignments or to even look through them. Okay. The next and very important tip I have for you is to host office hours, especially as soon as your digital or distance learning begins. The, there might not be a lot of curriculum uploaded at this point. You might only have physical activity logs or reading logs, but there are going to be a lot of technical questions from both you, from the students, and the parents and guardians. So provide these times for your families to be able to call you virtually or using uh, a phone. There are many apps where you can use to hide your cell phone, so if you're interested in that, look into those. I may even be able to link some down below in the comment section. As you're creating and filling in these gaps, the last tip I wanna leave you with is give yourself some grace. Um, you're doing something completely brand new, so understand that it's gonna be hard and it's okay. Uh, ask questions, look around, get some help, and don't forget to give yourself some grace. Well, stay safe, everyone. I hope this helped, and until later.